Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for May 20th. Today I'd like to read to you from the Holy Gospel of St. John, the 20th chapter of the first three verses in the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. I have said all this to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father, nor me. This is the word of God. Luther writes, Christ tells what moves those who oppose the gospel to such hatred and persecution of Christians as to excommunicate them and even attempt to kill them. It is because they preach concerning Christ, whom they themselves do not know. That they do not know Christ is true without a doubt. Their own deeds prove it. They are blind and without the true knowledge of God and of Christ, opposing God and his Son with their acts of ban and murder under the very appearance and with the boast of thereby serving God. But Christ strengthens and comforts his own people that they fear not harsh judgment nor are intimidated from preaching and confession, but say to their adversaries, We must obey God rather than men. Here Christ also fixes the standard of judgment and points out the difference between the true and the false church. The church is not to be judged by name and external appearance. Human reason cannot furnish the necessary qualifications for the true church. The actual test is in ascertaining who have the real knowledge of Christ and who have not. What does it mean to know Christ and the Father? The papists boast of such a knowledge as the Jews boasted of being able to recognize the Messiah. But an intellectual knowledge of God is not sufficient. He who wishes to know God truly must know him in the word and promises which the scriptures set forth about Christ, that Christ is the Son of God, sent by the Father as a sacrifice and ransom for the sins of the world, that he might appease the wrath of God and effect reconciliation for us, redeeming us from sin and death and securing for us righteousness and everlasting life. Whenever, therefore, we have the knowledge of Christ, we must cease boasting and trusting in self-righteousness and in works. If Christ alone shall bear my sins, I cannot at the same time atone for them by my own works and by my own pretended worthiness. This teaching points out the true Christ and the real knowledge of him. He who thus knows Christ knows the Father also. This knowledge is the article of faith by which we become Christians and is the foundation of our salvation. Well, there's a lot packed in to this dense uh, two paragraphs that Luther wrote so long ago, but it's just as true for us today as it ever was. If we are to know Christ, it cannot be by uh, knowledge of ritual, it cannot be uh, knowledge of uh, church history, custom, uh, our heritage. All of these things are important to us, of course, but to know Christ is to know Christ alone through his word, not through our understanding, not through our knowledge, not through our works, surely. For then, that would nullify, at least in our own minds, and that's the problem, our own reason, it would nullify the work of Christ on the cross and in the grave and in his resurrection and ascension. These are the things by which uh, true Christians are known by God, to God. And it's the way that we know God, by believing his word. So when we have this good confession, that he is the Christ, the promised one, promised in the scriptures, and we understand this because the Spirit has spoken to us through the scriptures, we can expect to be put out of churches, put out of synagogues, put out of people's lives. We can expect that there will be division in family and friends and workmates. This is the way it has always been. It always will be. So when that happens, trust in God. Don't trust in those relationships. Don't trust in your ability to make them right. They'll probably never be right not the way you want them to be anyway. So trust in God through his Christ. His spirit will work it out for you and you will have his peace. Let's pray. We trust in you, Lord Christ, in you alone, above all others, above ourselves. Help us to trust you more for your sake, for Christ's sake, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. Please join me again tomorrow for Reading the Word with Luther.